welcome back to Talking Dragon Age, the show where I talk about Dragon Age. Today we're talking about the Order of Fiery Promise. Love the concept. Really hoping to see more of them in the future. The Fiery Promise part of their name is... eh. But in shorthand, they're called the Promisers. And that's bloody awesome. So we encounter them only in Cassandra's personal quest. Lord Seeker Lucius betrayed the Seekers of Truth by ordering them into traps. Corypheus did some experiments and found out the Seekers are immune to the effects of Red Lyrium, which is an interesting thing on its own that surprisingly isn't paid much attention. So Corypheus let the Order of Fiery Promise have the surviving Seekers. The Promisers believe they are the true Seekers. They believe the Seekers of Truth stole their purpose centuries ago. They also believe the only way to save the world is to destroy it so a new one can rise from the ashes. Cassandra describes them as being drunk on whatever forbidden magic they can get. From the looks of things, they make use of Red Lyrium during this time. That may just be a case of reused assets, but I think it really is Red Lyrium. They're kind of like cockroaches, because the original Inquisition wiped them out in a battle known as the Cleansing of Charneau. Then they reappeared in the early Divine Age, and the Chantry hunted them down, and it took until the Exalted Age, some four to five hundred years later, to wipe them out again. And even then, they continued to pop up in small groups, even into the Dragon Age. Now, I want to talk about Daniel, because this scene is confusing. He says they put a demon inside him, and he's not possessed. They fed him things. He can feel it growing. It looks like Red Lyrium poisoning, but they established the Seekers are immune to the effects of Red Lyrium. The wiki says they force-fed him Red Lyrium, and Daniel describes the sensation like a demon growing inside him. See, I always took this to mean they put a demon inside him. Like, maybe a demon was bound to a thing they forced him to eat? Or they fed him things to weaken him? then guided a demon into him, but because the demon couldn't take hold of his mind due to him being a seeker, now it's just playing havoc with his body. Or, they just force-fed him red lyrium and it's growing inside him, and he likens it to a demon despite A, not having any idea what that feels like, and B, being apparently immune to the effects of red lyrium. The wording here is so confusing. If, if the writers didn't mean that they put a demon inside him, he shouldn't have said that they put a demon inside him. They should have just skipped that line entirely, or flat out said they force-fed me red lyrium, and it feels like a demon inside me. Even now, I honestly don't know what he meant by that. Or if the Seeker's immunity to red lyrium is mental or physical. Or neither, I am so confused. Maybe they couldn't become addicted or receive any special powers the way the Templars did? But maybe it's still poison. Would have been nice to have this, you know, explained. And, you know, there are easier ways to torture and heal people than force-feeding them poison. Now, if they were manipulating demons, we don't see any on the mission. Or even any mages. But that doesn't necessarily mean they don't recruit any. The way Cassandra describes them being drunk on whatever forbidden magic they could find I assume they make use of mages to try and experiment with making themselves stronger. I don't think they view mages the same way the Templars and Seekers do. Especially since... Well, it's time to talk about their future. In the Codex Entry for the Astrariums, it said the Order of Fiery Promise set out to destroy all the Astrariums because they believed the Astrariums held up the Veil, and that destroying them would likewise destroy the Veil and thus destroy the world, and see it reborn a paradise. Sounds like a certain ancient elven rebel we all know. I am confident these guys will be trying to help Solas in his endeavor. Whether or not any humans would be around to see this new paradise is unknown. It's possible Solas tells them that humans will survive, even if that's a lie. He is the trickster. And, uh, surprisingly, that's about it. The Promisers are such a cool concept, and I'm really excited to see more of them. In summary, they hate the Seekers, they've been wiped out many times but always manage to reappear, they use magic in weird ways that we haven't seen many examples of yet, but we hopefully will in the future, they want to destroy the world so it can be reborn a paradise, 
and at one time tried to destroy the Veil to accomplish this. So I think they will ally themselves with the other group that has that same goal, even if, ultimately, they are being manipulated. Or maybe they intend on betraying Solus, because that'll go well. Or maybe they're smart enough to realize they can't defeat him, or use weird forbidden magic to make themselves powerful enough to defeat him. Who knows? So, yeah. If you guys want to talk more about Dragon Age lore, you can jump on over to Discord and chat with me and other fans. So that's it for now, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to comment and like, and remember, Tala Nadas.